was on the shores that round our coast from Deal to Ramsgate span that I found alone on a piece of stone an elderly naval man. His hair was weedy, his beard was long, and weedy and long was he. And I heard this wight on the shore recite in a singular minor key. Oh, I am a cook and a captain bold and the mate of the Nancy brig and a boatswain tight and the midship might and the crew of a captain's gig. And he shook his fists and he tore his hair till I felt really afraid, for I couldn't help thinking that the man had been drinking, and so I simply said, O oh, elderly man, it's little I know of the duties of man of the sea, and I'll eat my hand if I understand however you can be. At once a cook, and a captain bold, and the mate of the Nancy brig, and a boatswain tight, and a midship might, and the crew of a captain's gig. Then he gave a hitch to his trousers, which is a trick all seamen larn, and having got rid of a thumping quid, he spun this painful yarn. T'was on the good ship Nancy Bell that we sailed to the Indian Sea, and there on a reef we came to grief, which has often occurred to me, and pretty nigh all the crew was drowned, there were seventy-seven old soul, and only ten of the Nancy men said, Here, to the muster roll, there was me and the cook and the captain bold and the mates of the Nancy brig, and a boatswain tight, and a midship might, and the crew of a captain's gig. For a month we'd neither whittles nor drink, till a hungry we did feel. So we drawed a lot, and accordingly shot the captain for our meal. The next lot fell to the Nancy's mate, and a delicate dish he made. Then our appetite with the midship might, we seven survivors stayed. Then we murdered the boatswain tight, and he much resembled pig. Then he whittled free, did the cook and me, on the crew of the captain's gig. Then only the cook and me was left, and a delicate question which of us two goes to the kettle arose, and we argued it out as such. For I loved that cook, <coughs> as a brother I did, and the cook, he worshipped me, but we'd both be blowed if we'd either be stowed in the other's hold, chap's hold, you see. I'll be eat if you dines of me, said Tom. Yes, that, says I, you'll be. I'm boiled if I die, my friend, quoth I. And exactly so, quoth he. Says he, dear James, to murder me were a foolish thing to do. But don't you see that you can't cook me while I can and will cook you? So he boils the water and he takes the salt and the peppers in portions true, which he never forgot some chopped shallop, and some sage and parsley too. Come here, says he, with proper pride, which his smiling features tell. Twill soothing be if I let you see how it's truly nice you smell. And he stirred it around and around and around, and he sniffed at the foam and froth. When I up to this heel, he smothered his squills and scum at the boiling broth. And I eat that cook in a week or less, and as I eat in thee, the last of his chops, why, I almost dropped, for a rough vessel in sight I see. And I never laugh, and I never smile, and I never lark or play, but I sit and croak, and a single joke I have, which is to say, Oh, I am a cook, and a captain bold, and the mate of the Nancy brig, and a bosun tight, and a midship might, and the crew of the captain's gig.